also posted my other video just a couple days ago which was really like two weeks ago that I filmed it. And then we come back and now you guys are gonna see that we've got all the trees are blossom, the grass is green, the leaves are on the trees. It seems like just yesterday there was no leaves on the trees and no blossoming happening. Since I filmed last, I put about 3,000 miles on these Venom Power tires on the Cadillac and I thought I'd give you a short review. We took this thing all the way down into Florida. We're up here in Northern Indiana. So we took it all the way down into Florida, did a bunch of driving down there driving back and forth you can see all the road you know dust and dirt and grime all down the car uh, it did good it did good you can see the tires you can try to see how they how they wore down just a little bit we did about 3,000 miles on these tires in less than two weeks of ownership so so far so good though i love the way they ride they don't ride bad at all it's easy to keep this thing straight in the lanes easily handles nothing bad to say about them other than road noise and um, the road noise really isn't bad if you've got the music going or a movie going in the back you know and it kind of plays over the sound of the noise of the road the road noise from the tires you know but you know that's expected with an aggressive all-terrain but so far i'm happy they didn't wear weird or uneven in the first 3,000 miles and i told you guys i wanted to see how they'd hold up because we uh we do drive this vehicle a lot and um, so far, so good. Love them so far. And we drove a lot in the rain, dry pavement, and some heavy rain at one point. And uh, we didn't have any grip issues. I mean, the, these tires grabbed very well in the rain as well. We didn't, I didn't feel at any point that I was like nervous of losing traction or anything on the road while cruising in the rain. And it was it handled very nicely. I'm very, very happy with them so far. Well, right when we left, we dropped off the dually. So we've got gauges for the dually here. We've got some head studs and rocker pedestals. We've got an AFC housing spring kit for the pump on that truck. We've also got a 4K governor spring kit for that truck. We just got some injectors in as well. And the compound turbo kit should be here any day. So as soon as that truck gets back from paint, which like I said, um, the video that went up two days ago of us dropping that off, Seems like it was two days ago for you guys, but really that was two weeks ago when I actually filmed that. So that truck is about done. It should be done any day now. It should be pretty sweet when we get it back. It's gonna look freaking great with a fresh coat of paint. And then we're gonna get into the engine bay of that truck and really get to work on that. But for now, we don't have the truck today, so we're not gonna be able to film with the truck today. So we're gonna get to doing some other things around the place like everything needing mode so the pastures need mode the yard needs mode we need to do a bunch of weed trimming soon i'm going to be getting a bunch of weed killing done and all the gravel um just you know just spring stuff early summer first go around to get everything knocked out and done for the rest of the summer season just to make life a little bit easier and to make things look a little bit cleaner around here so we're going to get to started on some of the yard work today and then we might even get the old ring con here over to the ohio property to do a little bit of tree stand setup work over there i'm pretty excited about that got the racks coated if you guys didn't see that we got the racks coated with the bed liner coating we got the front rack coated we've got the um toolbox cover coated to match the racks and just kind of like that flat black look that we are going for uh, to match the rest of the flat black stuff on it due for a cleaning and then uh, we're gonna get to get to getting that to work today as well too <laughs> So we got the 14 foot trailer hooked up today. The Cadillac all washed off. See the tires a little bit better maybe now that they're clean. So we've got some work we've got to do over at the Ohio property. This truck is also leaving tomorrow. Just sent him his five grand today. So what we're going to be doing is one thing here on the ETV that I'd like to get put on today. Uh, we've got the gorilla cart here. We've got it loaded down with the tree stands and straps and all that jazz. But there's something that I'd like to do with the rear end of this ATV. So we've got the trailers and it's always nice to be able to move trailers around with an ATV if you have one, just in case you want to move one, store it, pull it around the yard to load it up with you know, branches or whatever to haul it over here to burn. But if you put a ball on here, then you've got a ball on here, which is cool, but then you can't use your quick pin unless you take the ball off and put the pin in and whatever. It's kind of annoying, but what we've got in here 
is the solution to both of those problems. So this is actually a product that's made by Coleman. You can see there, this is Coleman on it. And it's supposed to be a hitch that also has a hole to where you can pull a pin styled wagon or cart or trailer or whatever behind it whether it's a hay wagon, a small wagon, or whatever, you can pull one of those behind it, you can put your bolt behind it, and it gives you a hook up on top there, you know, in case you gotta hook a strap on to pull you out of a hole, just hook your trailer chains on or whatever, just to keep them from dragging. It's a, it's a neat little thing. It was only 35 bucks on Amazon, and I'm telling you guys, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon, and for the people that don't understand the internet, they don't understand big businesses, and they don't understand Amazon's platform, Amazon doesn't make these parts. People will be like, oh, you know, eBay parts, Amazon parts, or whatever. And they like, they talk about it like in such an ignorant way that's hilarious because they're talking about those companies and people buying parts from there, like the companies that own the website manufacture those parts when they don't. They're just a website for people to list their own stuff on and companies from all over the world sell on there. So. Anyway, so what this does is it enables you to have a ball on here, right there, and then it still leaves you your opening for a hole to where then you can put your pin on if you're pulling around like a cart like the one I've got here or you know, hay wagon or whatever. It just has a small hole for a pin to just drop through. Um, and again, it's got a hook up on here for either a toe strap to pull you out if you need pulled out of something, or to hook your chains on so they're not dragging. All you do is run a bolt through here down onto the hull that's already available on the back of your Honda ATV. And now I don't know if Honda's changed that they don't have a class two on the back of their ATVs factory or not. All I know is back when this one was made, they didn't have that and I'm guessing since what I've seen online, these things really haven't changed at all. I'm guessing they're still probably the same since Honda's not too big on updating their ETVs really. But we're gonna get this thrown on here. I'm gonna show you how it works. Drop it through. You put this, it's called a star washer. You put that in between there and the rear hitch on the ATV, put your, put your lock washer on, put this back on, and the point of the star washers to try to bite into that metal, that way your hitch doesn't swivel around so much. It still might a little bit over time, but you're not using your ATV to haul down the road 70 miles an hour. so. I would hope that that's not a huge concern to everybody. It, it might it might get old, it might get a little annoying, um, but it's not the end of the world. And just make sure it looks like it's about center. I feel it's starting to bite in a little bit. That's it. The thing is not moving. So then now you've got your receiver here. Uh, not not your receiver. This is your receiver, I guess. That goes in there. Just throw your pin in. And there you go. That's all there is to it. And now I've still got to buy another ball. I didn't realize it didn't come with the ball, I guess. Kind of makes sense since who knows what type of trailer you're going to be using and what ball it requires. I mean, I've got two different trailers that require two different hitches and two different size balls and everything else. So, I mean, it makes sense. There's different applications and different things. But um, this is good to go. That's bolted on. And now I can still pull my small wagon or hay trailers at my dad's place when he got to move hay wagons or whatever. Or I can put my two inch ball on here, which is what I'll probably put on to move the smaller trailer because I'm probably not going to be pulling my. Uh, 10,000 pound rated trailer around my yard to move brush or move stuff from the house to the barn or what have you. Um, so probably gonna put my two inch ball in here and then we should be good. For anybody that may be interested in one of these 
um, adapters for the rear of the ATVs that don't have a two inch receiver as it is. I'll leave a link to the one that I bought down in the description below that goes directly to this product. So if you guys wanna pick one of these up for your ATV, maybe you didn't know that that was a product that was available, I'll leave a link down there to help you find it much easier. So you can just click the link and go buy it if you want one. We are here at the property. We got the front yard mowed. It's all maintained now. I'm actually the only person to uh, mow the front yard out of the few houses along the road right there, and I don't even live here. On our way back here, I wasn't able to bring the ATV, unfortunately, which I was super excited about because it didn't fit on the trailer that I was taking today with the mower, the wagon, and the four-wheeler, and I needed the wagon, and I needed the mower because of the tree stands for the wagon and I needed the mower due to mowing the front lawn before it got too out of hand. But I couldn't bring the ATV, which kind of sucked, but um, it's not too bad to just pull this thing, which again, was one of the reasons why I wanted this particular cart that way. If I couldn't have the ATV for certain times, I could still just use the handle and it pulls super easily. Zero turn radius, all the stuff, it's great. So we're gonna grab this, we're gonna pull it back to where we're going and uh, get a new stand put up today. Well, I don't know if you can still hear them running off or not there. Hiking back into the woods here, pulling my cart, and I walked right up on within... I mean, I wasn't even being quiet. I'm just dragging the cart, and it's, the wheels are clinging a little bit, like the, the pins on them and stuff, and I'm like, just like, ah, da 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 not expecting to walk up on anything, because I'm thinking, I'm just loud enough. I'm just loud enough. I've got to be giving everything a good warning, you know, that I'm coming. I look up, and I'm like, there's freaking deer standing there, and there's six or seven does. At least they look like does. I'm assuming they're does in a big group like that right now, but just standing there, hanging out. So I'm gonna pull the cart over here so I have something to set my camera on. But you know how I thought that hedge trimmer sucked? Yeah, well, it actually does not suck. Put a different battery on here and this one is 100% charged. That's crazy. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've actually got a tree stand right over there, and I've got a mineral rock here in the state of Ohio. You can bait, and this is just a mineral site. It's not like these deer are just sitting around here obsessed over this mineral rock. They only consume as much as they feel their body is urging them to consume day by day. It's not like a corn pile or a sugar beet pile or whatever, like something sweet that's like candy to deer. It's just, it's just a mineral rock. Um, it's for their herd health and stuff. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to trim off some of the stuff here with this hedge trimmer, trim off these bushes here and give me a nice straight shot to that tree stand right there because they do come out of this path a lot right out here and uh, it's gonna give us a perfect little window to shoot at the deer right before they make it off into this plot because you can get a couple shots into the plot but for the most part, it's gonna be kind of tough because of all these bushes here but we did that on purpose because we don't want deer sitting in the plot the whole time and having a full blown open access view to see us up in the stand if we're moving around trying to get ready for the next opening when they step out. Um, too many openings and too much of a view is not good. You want to have good views to make good shots, but nothing crazy. First time using it. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> So here's the final result. There's the tree stand. I just took that hedge trimmer, trimmed a bunch of stuff back so much quicker than trying to use a saw and get every tiny little stick and limb. The thing is actually blazing fast and cuts super, super well. And um, this is a trail that they come out right here, right here. And you got an opening right here. Then if they take another couple steps, which is the most likely view, there'll be broadside coming around that corner right here, 30 yards coming out to this plot, coming out to the hinge cut line to browse, 
and out to the main feeding field. So next day here, we're actually going to be taking an ATV today. We got some mowing done at the property. And we got one stand set, but it didn't come with any ratcheting straps, and I just prefer to use ratcheting straps. I'm still going to leave the two that it came with on there, but I'm also going to throw a ratchet strap on there just as a little added measure of safety and keeping that stand snug on that tree. But we're going to show you what we ended up doing because I didn't show you the location of that, but we're going to be taking the four-wheeler today. It was a muddy mess yesterday. The mower wasn't going to be able to go back. I already knew that, so I just had to take the wagon, which worked out in that way to pull it all the way to the back of the property, a good 600 yards. So it worked out. It was just more time consuming than it could have been if I had four-wheel drive to be able to just pull the two tree stands, two ladders, saws, and all that other stuff all the way back. So um, we're gonna get loaded up, get on over there, and get to work. First gen's going today. Winter's gonna be getting picked up at the airport here within the next couple hours. It's all cleaned out. The original carpet, original seats. See a little cigarette, cigarette burn on it way back eighty six thousand miles on it don't see that a lot the guy is super stoked his name is Travis Stewart he's out of Washington State and he told me he's driving this thing all the way back from Fort Wayne Indiana to the west half of Washington State which is approximately 33 hours of drive time, including zero stops. He said he's excited to make the trip, and I have no doubts this truck will make the trip totally fine. But we're gonna miss this one. We're gonna try to get a little bit of video with him while he's here, but it's a legend, and it's going. Okay, so here's the location I set up yesterday that I didn't end up filming. It's right on the back side of this huge sycamore tree. Um, it's actually right up against city limits because the whole property is in city limits but the edge of the town is actually right here but the amount of deer that cross right here along these backyards and right here across the river when it's not flooded is just crazy i mean last season we didn't hunt over here but i think two times and that was in late january early february right when the season was ending here in ohio it was just unbelievable how many deer were coming through here and how many shots um, we could have had if we would have been set up over here would have been crazy because we had another stand about 200 yards away here and there's just one little sliver where you can see off into the distance and it was every single time we hunted that stand several times we'd see big groups of deer cutting through back here right along this back edge so we're setting up here a spot just so we have at least an option so if the wind's blowing out these houses most of the time these deer are going to be crossing on the other side here of the stand over here is the main crossing point it would be a great morning stand if you could sneak in here on water with a kayak canoe a small john boat with a little electric motor just go through here make sure there's no dead trees on the river before season opens and cut them out of the way if they're in the way and then we can just come right up here and then this tree right here there's actually again when it's not flooded we just got a ton of rain but there's a nice low bank on the other side of this grass right here it drops off about three and a half feet and there's a nice little like almost like a little kind of looks like a little beach i mean it's a real small sandy spot that's like a little little bank there and you could easily just take the boat pull right up onto that bank tie your boat off up against behind that tree and it would be below the main ground level up here and they wouldn't see it unless they were literally under your stand looking over the bank to see it some wood ducks flying through here it could be it could be a really killer access spot to get in here in the mornings when thermals are rising you can get down below here and again being down in the water the bank's pretty high on either side when it's not flooded to where you could probably cruise right down the river here in the mornings and not spook anything the motor doesn't make any sound because it's battery and the banks are high enough when the water's at normal level to where they wouldn't see you cruising up the canal here to tie off and climb up the tree. So anyways, let's get to putting our one more ratchet strap up on the top here, up on the stand, and then we're gonna get to trimming some lanes here and getting the spot prepped so we can get out of here today. And this will be probably the last time we're back here until deer season or very close to season just to make sure everything's still good with the stand. And this is how I'm filming out here when I'm alone. I've got my camera on where used to film my hunts and uh, got it leveled out there. So we're going to mount this up and get going.
just trimmed for the stand right here. Just hinged over a couple trees, trimmed a couple branches. See, I hinged a couple more small ones off in the distance there at about 30 yards. And that's about as far as I care to shoot in here because try to get any shots further than that, I'm gonna have to trim or hinge way too many trees. So it's really just gonna end up being uh, way too much change to the area. But for this, all I did was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight small trees just to kind of get me one nice visual down through there where they cross through a lot coming down that little swale to cross the creek here when it's when it's low this is a really good spot to cross um, so that's a good opening there but other than that though the stand's got a lot of nice cover this nice small tree right up in front provides a nice shield and then uh, you won't be able to see directly to the stand until they come out to this opening which at that point I'm already on them and it's too late so um, it'll be it'll be a pretty solid location however the winner for the first gen is landing in Fort Wayne in the next few minutes so I've got to pack up and get out of here because I'm gonna actually go pick him up at the airport right now dude this truck is so nice there it is dad there's a fucking truck I won oh my yes <laughs> oh. I think he likes it. Dude, dude Travis. This is awesome. Heck yeah, man. Thank you so much. Just, just one more truck. Just one more just truck. One more truck. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I can't even believe it, man. This is so awesome. No words for the thought? Just too much? It's just too much. This is awesome. It's not a scam. Don't ever believe it's a scam. All right? It's real. the truck that started it all. It's hard not to get emotional over that one. You know, like, there's a lot of trucks that we've given away that like, I was like, man, that's such a cool truck, but since I had them for like less than two months, it didn't really bother me. But that truck, oh man. Because the way we got that truck and everything, it, it, like, it, it just all, it has so much tied to how everything even came about here that it, that's why it tugs at me a little bit. I'm happy for him. Super stoked for him. I'm always happy for all of our winners. But like the way we even got that truck, like it, it, like it came from something that was a bad situation where my dad had gotten robbed and somebody stole ETVs and a side-by-side -side out of his barn and here we're thinking like this is this bad situation because it was a bad situation, you know? To then finding this truck on Craigslist and being like, oh, there's a cool truck, low miles, cool, let's buy it, you know, with the insurance money. And me filming a video of picking up that truck being the first video I ever filmed to then that video actually doing really well, almost 100,000 views or over that. So then me being like, maybe I do wanna try this little YouTube thing. Buying my first diesel a month later. You know, like it, just one thing from another. Start out with something that seemed like a really bad thing and turned into something so much greater. And all this whole YouTube journey and all this other stuff, that truck had such a huge part of that. And it led to me meeting my wife, to us now having our son. You know, we're gonna be married two years here in June. Like, it's, it's just, it's crazy. Like so much, so much came from one, one small bad thing that ended up being something so great and essentially leading to me having the life that I do now. It's just, it's, it's beyond me. Let's just say that it is like mind blowing to me. You know, a little bit of everything. There was some ATV stuff. There was some deer management stuff. And then there was somebody winning a truck and taking it back across the United States from Indiana to Washington, not just Washington, the west side of the state. And just always think on this, on the topic of how we got that truck and people robbing from you know, my parents and it ended up turning into me filming a video of my dad buying his truck, then to me buying my truck and then just this whole thing since then. When things happen to you, they're not necessarily good and they're not necessarily bad, 
they're just things that happen to you. It's, it's this thing we call life. Stuff just happens, right? But it's what you take from those things that determine whether or not they were good or bad things. So just think on that, let that sink in. You know, there's a lot of stuff that, that has happened even over the last few years that sometimes things happen and you're just like, you, you have to decide in your mind right away, am I gonna be upset about this? Am, am I gonna let this be a bad thing? Or am I gonna take this as a learning experience? Am I gonna take this as a tool to fuel me for the next thing? Am I going to allow this to be a learning process? Am I gonna allow this to be something that can enable me or Reagan and I or our family or whatever to do more, to do better? It all comes down to a decision and how you perceive things and how you take things and use it. So anyways guys, hopefully enjoyed that video. If you wanna get entered to win our five speed manual dually sport 12 valve Cummins plus $5,000 cash, and be like Travis there who just picked up his dream truck and is driving it back across the United States. It's, it's this simple. Go to lmpgear.com, buy a shirt like this or a hat like this or a shirt like the one he was wearing. It doesn't matter what it is on the website, buy anything off the website and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win the truck that we're giving away this month plus five grand. And right now, every $1 is gonna get you five entries and the five X entry deal is only gonna last until April 19th and then it's gone. So anyways guys, thank you so much for all the love and all the support. You guys rock. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.